Hello, I'm Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today I'd like to cover Pure Maths 1 Differentiation Part 3, Increasing and Decreasing Functions. So uh, like we talked about in Part 2, it's very important that you remember where you're at in this process. So, and also pay attention to what is given. Sometimes they give you the original function, sometimes they give you the first derivative. So you really need to remember what level you're on and also again, remember it's a main application. So for the original function is where you find coordinates. The first derivative is anything related to slope, and then the second derivative we haven't gotten to yet. We'll actually get to that in the, the next video. So in part four. So we've been looking at applications with respect to slope. And in part two, we saw that slope can be in, in tangent lines and normal lines. The slope of the tangent to the curve and the normal to the curve. Now what we're gonna do is we're still gonna look at slope, but instead of looking at something that's tangent to a curve, you know, where it touches at one point, or where something is normal to the curve, where it's at a 90 degree angle, we're gonna look at the curve in terms of increasing or decreasing. So if, if our slope or if our curve is going up, meaning increasing, notice that the slope will be positive. Okay, the slope will be positive if your curve is going up from left to right. If your curve is going down from left to right, the, <coughs> excuse me, the slope along any one of those points would be negative, and then again, over here you see that the function is increasing again, the slope would be positive. So the slope changes with the curve. So when we're talking about increasing and decreasing, what we want to do is recognize that the slope, remember slope is first derivative, the slope is positive if your function is increasing. And positive means greater than zero. Greater than zero are positive numbers. So anytime you're dealing with an increasing function, you want to set the first derivative greater than zero. And if you're dealing with a decreasing function, then your first derivative needs to be less than zero. Less than zero is negative. So this is this is our mental concept that we need to understand anytime we see increasing or decreasing. And so here is our first example. And notice they use this notation here. I, I don't use this notation myself, but this is the same thing as f of x. Okay, f of x is the same meaning, it's just a little different notation for writing it, but you should recognize it as being f of x. And they give us this cubic function, and it gives a domain statement. This is going to be very important for your increasing, decreasing, is to understand the purpose of this domain statement. Because we're solving for A, and it says find the largest A. Okay, And it's stated to be increasing. So here we have important things, our domain statement. It's increasing function. And we want to find the largest value of A. Now, as soon as it tells us it's an increasing function, that is our clue that we're dealing with slope. Because in order for a function to be increasing, its slope has to be positive. And slope is first derivative. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find our first derivative. We'll just use the y prime. You could use f prime of x uh, notation as well. So y prime equals, remember, multiply to the front, subtract 1. So we get 3x squared, multiply to the front, subtract 1, a minus 2x. And this is an understood one. Multiply to the front and subtract 1 gives you 0. And the derivative of a constant is 0. 
So we get 3x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we're going to take that because it says it's increasing, we're going to make it greater than 0. The value of this slope needs to be greater than 0. And we want to find over what domain. So in other words, from here to this dot right here, it's increasing. From this dot to this dot, it's decreasing. And from this dot over this direction is increasing. So we want to find an interval here. So notice we have a quadratic with an inequality. This takes you back, hopefully, review of your quadratics unit and quadratics specifically with inequality. So we want to factor this. And we can factor this. Factors of 3 are 1 and 3, 1 and 8, 2 and 4. And we want to come up with a negative 2. So 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 4 is 4. 6 or 4 minus 6 gives us the negative 2. So we want a 3x. Uh, the signs are going to be one of each, a positive and a negative. So we, we want the 3 times a 2, and we want it to be negative. So we want a negative 6 plus 4 greater than 0. So when we look at this, we can double check 3x squared, negative 8, negative 6 plus 4, or you could say 4 minus 6 is a negative 2. Then when we solve these, we get x equals negative 4 thirds and x equals 2. Now, this is only to find the boundaries. In other words, what we just found here are the two black dots. Now, this graph is not necessarily this graph up here. This is just a general representation. But when you solve for x, what you're doing is you're finding these, uh, the high and lowest place. That's where min and max come in later. But the, these black dots are the boundaries between the positive and the negative. So this is not your answer yet. The numbers is what we want to work with, not, not the equal sign because we have an inequality. What we need to find out is which direction our inequality goes. Pay very close attention because most students just take this inequality and they plug it in here and they do all this work to get the right numbers, but they don't finish correctly. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make a little number line here. Just make a little number line. Put these numbers in order, so negative comes before positive. So here's a negative 4 thirds, and here's a 2. Okay, so just in order. Now, notice that what we have is a quadratic, and the x squared is positive. That means our quadratic is facing up. So if you were to graph this, these would be the zeros of the function, the solutions. That means our graph is going like this. Okay, so these would be the zeros or the solutions if we were solving that for equals zero. So when these equal these values, this actually equals zero. It's not greater than zero. Notice this is the x-axis, which is the y equals zero line. So this is where it equals zero. What we want are the positives and the negatives, the increasing and the decreasing. So notice this is above zero. The part of the graph here is above the x-axis. That means this section is positive. Between the two numbers, it goes below the x-axis. That means that's negative. And over here, it's positive again. Now, this graph is not the original graph but it's an interpretation of the original graph. Meaning, from the left over here, in negative infinity, all the way to negative 4 thirds, our graph is going up. This is, remember this is slope. So this graph isn't the original graph, but it represents the slope, slope first derivative, the slope of the original. So the original graph 
is increasing, going up from negative infinity to negative four thirds. It's going down from negative four thirds to two, and then it's going back up or increasing again from two on to positive infinity. So we've got three sections here. We have two increasing sections and one decreasing section. If we wanted to draw the original graph, we know it would look something like this with negative four thirds right here, two right here. Notice the graph is increasing on this side. It's decreasing between the two and it's increasing again over there. So this would be a rough, very rough sketch of the original function. And this, what we solved with our quadratic inequality, this is the exact same method we used back in the quadratics unit, is now being used to interpret our original because our original is a cubic, so the first derivative is then quadratic. So this is the interpretation of this. Notice we have increasing function it's going up, then in this section we have decreasing function, it's going down, and then in this section it's increasing again, going up. So what we want is we want the part of the interval that is showing an increasing function that has this inequality. So if we were to do the inequalities for this, we would have x less than negative four thirds, okay, x less than negative four thirds, and this is increasing. Then we have uh, from negative four thirds, we could put it like this, to two is decreasing. And then for x greater than two, from two on, we have increasing again. So we have one interval for the decreasing part, and we have two intervals of increasing. This is where you really have to pay attention to the domain, how it's listed. They don't want both increasing intervals. They only are asking for one. And notice it has the less than. So that's this one over here. This one has a greater than sign. So it's not looking for that one. It's looking for this one. And notice it says x less than negative four thirds, and it says the largest. Why does it say largest? Two is bigger than negative four thirds. This isn't about what is bigger or smaller with these two numbers. It has to do with the interval itself. There are three intervals here. So if you look at this interval, this interval is all the way back here. This could be like, say, negative 10, negative 5. So as it goes in this direction, notice as it comes here, the number gets bigger. The biggest number, the largest number in this interval is the negative 4 thirds because it's going all the way from negative infinity, which is super, super small, all all the way up bigger, 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 and then it reaches the negative four thirds where it stops. So negative four thirds, we don't include the negative four thirds uh, because we didn't include it here. I don't think Cambridge would fault you if you add it or don't add it. Doesn't particularly matter on whether you include the negative four thirds. So, um, we, we, we could include it so that you can actually say the largest A. Notice it does not want you to find X. It's asking for A, meaning what number is in this location. It's, so it's not actually even asking for the interval. It's asking for the specific number that is the largest endpoint of the interval. Okay, so you're not looking for x, you're looking for a, it says find a, so the a value, that's the largest possible number that you can have on this particular interval is negative four thirds, okay? So that's how we do it. We'll look at a few examples and uh, 
we won't have to go through the explanation again and we'll just see how we solve them. So let me set up the next one. Okay, here we go again with our second example. Here you see a function and here we have an interesting fractional exponent, 2x minus 1 raised to the 3 halves power minus 6x. It has an interval here, here's the domain statement, from 1 half to some unknown value. We want to find our largest value of k to make this a decreasing function. Okay, so there is an interval over which this graph is going down. We want to find the largest number, or in other words, the upper end of this interval. So again, we're not looking for x. We're looking for the boundary of x, a specific value that is the largest number that you put in here to fulfill this interval that shows the decreasing part of the function. So again, decreasing, increasing has to do with slope. We find the first derivative. This is the original f of x, so we want to find the f prime of x. So this time I'll use the f prime of x notation equals, remember multiply your exponent to the front, 3 halves, subtract 1, so that leaves you 2x minus 1 to the 1 half, 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half, and then don't forget the derivative of the inside because this is expanded form. Remember your expanded form, the exponent is not on the x, the exponent is on the parentheses. So you need to remember to do the derivative of inside the parentheses, which gives us another multiply by two. So the derivative of two x is two. And then this one is just a simple term. So one times negative six is minus six and then subtract one makes zero, your x goes away. So you just get minus six. And since this is decreasing, we want less than zero. We wanna find the values that make this less than zero or our slope is going down, uh, downward. So now notice the twos cancel here. So divide by two, multiply by two. So that gives us a, 3 times 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. And if we add this 6 to the other side, less than 6. So then we can divide by 3. So we get 2x minus 1 to the 1 half less than 2. Now, 1 half is like a square root. Remember, power over index number? So fractional exponent one half is same thing as square root. So we want to square both sides, which is like multiplying by two exponentially. One half times two cancels to give you one. So you just get two x minus one less than two squared is four. Okay. Now we can add one to both sides, two x less than five. And then we can divide by 2. So we get x less than 5 halves. Now notice that uh, this gives us a less than sign, which is what we're looking for. So this 1 half, actually, you don't really have to know how they get the 1 half but it, it has to do with this, the type of graph it is. This is the end point of the graph. You can see 2x minus one. If you were to solve it, you get one half. But anyway, they've provided the left-hand end point of the decreasing part. So what we need to do is provide the right-hand side. And that's what this is. Notice x less than k. So don't worry about where the one half comes from. We just want the x less than k. And here's what we have. Now remember, you're finding k, the largest k, meaning from the point of view of this interval, x can be smaller, so the smallest number is 1 half, or x can be bigger, and the largest 
value is the k. So we're actually finding k, not x. So we can say the largest value of k would be 5 halves. Now notice this does not have an equal to in it. That's OK. It's the, it's the number that goes there that we're looking for, meaning x can be up to, but not including that number, but that's still the number that belongs there. So it means you can approach the five halves. Technically, you don't actually get there. So x will not take the value of five halves, but k does take the value of five halves because that's what we arrived at in our solution. So it's, it's a little technical, but try to understand that you're finding the number that goes there, not the value of x. So don't let the inequalities throw you off. And don't let this larger and smaller. The larger and smaller is in reference to the interval itself. So this is the largest value of the interval and the smallest value of this particular interval. Okay, so k is how you need to define your answer, not with the x. Okay, so here is a, a little different one, this time with decreasing. And we got to practice our derivative, you know, doing the derivative again with both a normal regular term and with the expanded form. Don't forget the derivative of the inside. Okay, and then here's the application increasing and decreasing functions. So let's try again. Okay, here we go again. Here's our function x cubed minus. 9x squared plus 24x minus 12. Here is our domain statement that we're going to be looking for. x greater than a certain value, k. Find the smallest k, and this is an increasing function. So we know again with increasing, decreasing, this is about slope. So we find our first derivative again. So hopefully, as you practice doing your derivative, you get a little more efficient at it. So all of these are basic terms. There's no expanded here. So this is just 3x squared minus 18x plus 24. So hopefully, you can follow that through with your uh, rule. You're following your exponent rule for derivatives. Then this needs, since it's in increasing, it needs to be greater than 0. Slope going up is positive positive is greater than zero. Now we can, we have a quadratic inequality that we need to work on. So first thing we're going to do is divide everything by three. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 8 greater than zero. Now we can factor this. So the factors of 8, 1, and 8, 2, and 4 that add up to 6 are 2 and 4. So x minus 2, x minus 4, greater than 0. So that means our two values are x equals 2 and x equals 4. x equals 2 and x equals 4. Now remember, how you finish this depends on what the derivative came out to be. Now in the first example, and in this example, it turned out to be a quadratic. So we can apply what we learned in the quadratics unit. The last example, uh, the second of the, the one that we looked at just one before this, did not turn out to be a quadratic. That's why we had to solve it a different way. We had to solve it directly. This started off, the derivative was a quadratic. That means we can treat this uh, like we did the first example. We can make a number line with our 2 and 4 in order, so smallest to largest along the number line. And remember, since this derivative is a quadratic, it means our graph goes down and up like this, okay? So that uh, helps us to visualize what's going on. So remember, this is an interpretation of the original. So this part here is above the x-axis, meaning it's positive. Here's the negative section and the positive section. So there's three different intervals. What we're looking for 
is the increasing part, meaning one of the positives, so either x greater than 4 or x less than 2, and it wants the smallest value of k. Remember k, not x. So this, in this interval, we're going from here up to this point, meaning 2 would be the largest value on this interval. And then on this one, the interval's coming this way. So 4 would be the smallest, because you can have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, it's, it's actually going from here this way. And this one actually would probably be better to show it going this way. So this one is the largest value of this interval. This one is the smallest value of that interval there. So what we want is we want the x greater than k, so that fits this sign right here. We want the k value itself, not the x, so k equals 4. k equals 4, and that's our answer for this one. We have one more example, and hopefully by then you'll get the hang of this. Okay, this is our last example. Now this example has a little different twist to it. So pay close attention. You're gonna to wanna to take a few notes on this. Here it gives us our original function, f of x equals x cubed plus two x squared minus four x plus seven. And it says to determine whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or neither. Notice it does not give us any domain statement. It's not looking for an interval. It wants to know, is this function, and in some questions that are similar to this, it might say show that it is always increasing or that it's always decreasing. That's what they want to know. Does this entire graph increase over the whole graph? Does it decrease over the whole graph? Or does it go back and forth, meaning it would be neither, okay? So let's again uh, get started on this. And uh, here we have our, uh, um, because we're doing with increasing, decreasing, we wanna do slope, first derivative. Hopefully by now you see your pattern here, three x squared plus four x minus four. And now, um, we have this new decision that we need to make. Because it did not tell us increasing or decreasing, we can't put less than zero, greater than zero, equal to zero. So what we need to do is we need to come up with a way to determine whether this is always positive, always negative, or a mixture of both. So this is where you're gonna want to write notes because it does not identify how to set up the inequality. Notice though, we ended up with a quadratic. Okay, we ended up with a quadratic. This is where you want to complete the square. Oh no, the complete the square comes back to haunt us again. Yes, completing the square is what you want to use if you want to show that it's always increasing or always decreasing, or if you need to decide between the three of these, increase, decrease, or neither. So you want to complete the square, okay? So let's complete the square first, and then I'll explain to you why that's the method you want to choose. So, Complete the square, we're gonna remember this negative four doesn't work, so we move the negative four off to the side. Then, because there's an a value here, we're going to factor that three out of these first two terms. It's gonna leave us with a fraction here, don't worry about that. Now we need to come up with the magic number. Remember, your magic number comes from b over 2 squared. That comes from the completing the square video in the quadratics unit. So here's our b, the 4 thirds, divided by 2 will give us 4 sixths. 
which reduces to two thirds squared is then four ninths. So four ninths is our magic number. Don't forget there's the three in front. So when we equalize it, it becomes three and nine cancel and you get four thirds. So what we actually added was four thirds. So we need to subtract four thirds. Now this is a perfect square, three times x, here's that, that sign there plus, and right before you squared it, the two thirds squared. Now this is a 12 thirds, a minus 12 thirds, minus four thirds gives us a minus 16 thirds, okay? So there's a couple of ways that you can look at this. The reason why we complete the square is it makes it easy to interpret what's going on with the original function because this is slope and this is a quadratic and we don't have the inequality provided. So we need to look at it in a different form which completing the square provides for us. So here's two ways of looking at it and you can choose which way you wanna look at it. One of it is like this. If you are looking for like always increasing or always decreasing, what you're looking for are these two signs to be the same. So if this were positive, remember a square is always positive. No matter what's inside, when you square it, it becomes positive. So positive times a positive is still positive. So if it were a positive plus something, it will always be positive. Or if you had a minus out here, meaning a positive times a negative is negative, and you subtract something, it will always be negative. So if you're looking for something with like always increase or always decrease, you look to see that these two signs are the same and it will either always be positive or always be negative. So the fact that one is positive and the other one is negative, well, that's your indication that it's neither because it depends on the value of this positive. If the value of this positive is bigger than this, well, it will end up positive. But if the value of this is less than this, it ends up negative. In other words, it can be both, which is neither. So that's one way of looking at it is by looking that squares are always positive and then compare these two signs here. Both the same means it will either both always be positive or always negative, meaning always increasing or always decreasing. So since the signs are different, it's neither. Or you can also look at this in the terms of it being a quadratic. You can look at the range. The range of this quadratic, like if you were to draw, draw the graph, here's the y, the y coordinate of the vertex. So your range is going to be your y or f of x. Um, or actually our slope, sorry, because here we're dealing with our quadratic here, our f prime of x, the range is gonna be greater than, because it's a positive facing up, negative 16 thirds. So if it's greater than negative 16 thirds, then that means somewhere along the line, it crosses over the x axis, which is the zero. So everything up here is positive, but from here to here is negative, meaning that sometimes our graph is decreasing and sometimes our graph is increasing. Okay. Again, that demonstrates the neither concept because you have both positive and negative slope. So it's not all increasing and it's not all decreasing. There's parts of both in it. So here's two different ways to interpret it. You can either look at it uh, with the square and the signs, or you can look at it in terms of range and seeing whether or not the range crosses the zero. If the range crosses over the zero, then it's neither. 
if the range was above the zero and keeps going up, or if it's below the zero and keeps going down, then it will either all positive or all negative. So two different ways of looking at it. So again, the main thing that you need to write in your note is not only how to interpret it, choose a method here, but you need to remember that complete the square rearranges the form for you so that you can interpret what's happening. You cannot figure that out just from here, I guess unless you just randomly pick numbers in to see whether you get positives or negatives, but that's not a very efficient way. It's, it's better to do this. So write this down in your notes right here. That goes with specifically always increasing or decreasing or increasing, decreasing, neither uh, type of a question you'll want to use completing the square. So these are the typical question types that you will be dealing with with increasing and decreasing functions. This is your second video of application with regard to slope. In our next video, part four, we'll also do another slope application. And then in part five, we'll get into how to work with the differentials. So again, thank you for joining me and see you again next time.